everyone, my name is Marissa. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's been a while since I filmed and my hair is completely different because I've enjoyed changing it up and I'm not good at documenting it. So welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's been quite a while since I last filmed. Please heard that one before. Um, but the excuse this time is that I hectically had to move out of my apartment. Hectically not because the notice that my landlord gave me wasn't long enough. I am too chaotic, too unorganized, and frankly, a little bit too lazy to have gotten my act together to move out. So it turned into this like, The moral of the story is, I now have a filming room. And I am beyond excited because it means that I have a dedicated space where I can film videos, I can edit them, I'm looking at my computer right here, um, and I'm so excited to bring so much more content to you guys. It's been a while, so I thought that I would do an everyday makeup look. And uh, all told, this takes 20 to 30 minutes, 30 minutes if I'm really jamming it to K-pop. And I like to focus on two things, which is uh, glow. So I put on the, the, the glazed donut glow, you know what I'm saying? That's enough Gavin, let's get to the makeup. I'm gonna go in with Bioderma Hydro Bio. There are many different types of micellar water, such as Bioderma. This one I really like because it's hydrating. So I wasn't wearing anything. That is all dirt. Ew. Honestly, that's so gross. I don't know if you can tell the difference. This is the dirty one. This is the clean one. Doesn't look super cute, but I'm pinning my hair back because um, it's annoying. So next, we're going in with the um, kind of like priming, hydrating base, which is from Ombre Elise. This has hyaluronic acid in it, which um, helps this pump up the skin, so that's what I'm going for. It's got a little bit of kind of like a, a pearl to it as well. Do you see that instant glow? Cool. Nice. And then because I'm serious about hydration, I'm gonna take the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. You can use this to set your makeup as well, but I kind of prefer it before because it's um, between this and Fix Plus, MAC Fix Plus, this one is a lot more like liquidy. Fix Plus is like almost tacky. Let's start with the skin. I'm going to glaze quickly over the skin because I've already done a full-on dewy complexion uh, tutorial. It's very, very similar to what I'm gonna be using right now. I might be using a few new products, but I'm gonna link that one right there because it's a lot more in depth for you. But uh, always starting with a little bit of face and body from MAC. I don't know about you guys, but especially in the summer, I don't want to wear foundation. I feel like it gets so cakey, you sweat it off anyway. Um, and truthfully, there's quite a few foundations I like to wear in the winter, but there really are only like a handful that I like to wear during the summer, and this one is the number one. Okay, so I unfortunately have um, under eye bags. So uh, to counteract that, I'm gonna use the Prep and Prime highlighter from MAC. This stuff is just great because if you're super pale like me, you can't use the red lipstick or that bright orange thick paste corrector that everyone uses. You have to use something when you're correcting that matches the saturation and the intensity with which you're correcting on your face. So for me, I don't have any super, um, well, I don't understand red truthfully because red full on corrects green, but um, with me, I have to use something that corrects a very, very faint kind of like bruisey looking purpley blue shade. And so this peach is perfect for that. I'm gonna take the Estee Lauder Perfectionist Youth Infusing Brightening Serum and Concealer. I should have used this to brighten actually. Oops, I wanted to try a little bit more on. Let's see, let's see how this works. Okay. Okay, this is like kind of a little bit thicker than the MAC one, but it's doing quite a good job of brightening under my eyes. It's 
nice. It might be because I have two correctors on. But <laughs> let's use the concealer end of this. And lately, because uh, life update for you guys, I just moved house. It means that um, my life has been a mess for the past about two months now and a lot of other things have happened to me too like I tried vlogging I suck at vlogging um, I went to see the BTS concert with Amanda who is um, my fellow best BTS loving friend and um, we had such an amazing time I suck at vlogging like I try to vlog everything I try <laughs> I've tried to vlog my work trips to show you guys what I do at work because that's one of the big reasons why I can't film um, as often. And I suck at that. I just, I need to practice vlogging more. I think that's what it is. Amanda's such a natural at it. I love making videos. I love talking to you guys. My favorite part is having meaningful conversations with people in my comments, um, people who have watched my videos, particularly the uh, mixed girl tag video. People have like literally reached out to me on email and through Instagram DMs. It's basically just about what it was like for me growing up as um, a mixed girl, as half Asian. You know what? This looks amazing, I think. I love this stuff. It's the Anastasia Stick Contour. Oh, and then this is one of my most favorite brushes, the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Complexion Brush. I like to put all my cream products on first and then I'll powder. Um, if I get any creasing or anything under my eyes, you just kind of dab like this. Everybody gets creases under their eyes. I'm gonna take this Evio Beauty blush. All of the ingredients, if you care about natural beauty, all of these ingredients are, like, I understood what they were. There wasn't any of that, like, Iso, dodeca, trimethyl phosphate, like none of that. It was just all like oils and stuff that um, you'd recognize as an ingredient. Um, and I really value that actually because in a day and age where you have no idea what's going into most of your products, it's kind of nice to know what at least goes into what you're putting on your face. These edges is not laid. <laughs> Okay, so this is the Shout Tilbury Light Wand. It comes with this applicator, which is similar to her supermodel body. Um, I'm already looking quite glowy because of the face and body, but this is like pure light. Recently, Oakenfort, which is one of my number one favorite um, clothing brands. I wear so much Oakenfort. I love their style. Also love that they are based out of Vancouver, um, honestly one of Canada's coolest cities, and they came out with makeup. So um, this is the shade Rasa. Is that what you're called? Rasa? So I'm just going to add a little bit down here and then just a tiny bit here as well. I literally just follow the shape that I have my microblading in. I'm not trying to change everything up too much. I just wanted a little bit more definition, especially because when you put concealer, foundation, and everything on top, all you're really left with this is like ashy shadow. So you need to add that color back on top. Man, I am enjoying looking like a glazed donut right now. This is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. The actual sifter part is just this little hourglass H in the center, and the lid itself is domed, so it caps all the powder in, so it doesn't matter which way your product gets thrown around, once you open it, it's not this very expensive, like, $15 poof of powder that uh, you waste in the air. With that being said, when I powder, um, I'm very, very sparing with powder. I never use a brush bigger than, say, this, the MAC 240S, because I don't really like to powder, but I need to. I'm just dabbing very lightly under the eyes. 
basically this center t-zone is what I want to take care of but I don't want to lose any of this luminosity here I honestly find that my makeup leaves my nose the quickest um, nobody wants these like Neanderthal brow hotspots so I'm also just going to quickly go over here the reason why I'm able to blend backwards and forwards on say anywhere except for my under eyes is because on the under eyes there's a lot more product there there's concealer and um, two different types of corrector <laughs> but the rest of my face is literally just face and body so we're gonna be very very careful under here um, and pack on more if you feel like you need it I mean for some people it's their nose for us some other people it's like their jaw or their chin but for me the thing that bothers me the most about my face is my under eye bags um, I've had them since I was a child getting more sleep and drinking more water doesn't help because I've tried all those things you can see they're very very deep set kind of like bags under my eyes basically what powder does is it mattifies and therefore it doesn't allow light to reflect off of the surface as much so when it comes to over here you can see really it's not so much actually discoloration as it is a shadow under the eyes and here you see a lot less because there's less light reflected in it because of the powder and that is the exact reason my friends why I powder under my eyes and why I put quite a bit of powder as a matter of fact so let's get to doing this eye like I said just pack it on and then from there you can kind of loosely diffuse it don't get me wrong I am obsessed with my um, extra dimension skin finish from MAC I will always consider it probably the, the number one highlighter I've ever tried in my life but these shades from the MAC Hyper Real Glow Palette are so cool you've got this kind of like white with a blue shift this very um, kind of like violet pink these two are quite iridescent the way that they are and then this one which is the perfect glazed donut gleam So I have the movie pink one and the slightly peachier movie pink one. <laughs> so this is Fleur Power from MAC. I do need to bronze up my face with a little bit of this, which is the Make It Forever Pro Bronze Fusion. This is a gigantic brush <laughs> from MAC, 135S. But I find it's really good for if you just want an all over bronze, not if you're sculpting. But lately I haven't really been into overly sculpting through my cheeks. Not because I've lost weight and my cheeks are any more sculpted, I just haven't been into that look. <laughs> so I'm using the Milk Makeup Kush Fiber Brow. Very reminiscent of the Boy Brow by Glossier, but just easier to get because it's in a Sephora. I've had a lot of people in my day to day life too ask me like, what do you do with your eyebrows now that your hair is gray? And basically I just use blonde eyebrow products and even though my microblading is meant for my natural hair, which is a very dark brown, um, just putting brow gel like this in there helps to lighten up the tones a little bit. Um, and I mean, I always keep the roots a little bit darker, so I think it still kind of works. So this is the Naked Reloaded palette. Dare I say that this is a better collection of neutrals than the original Naked One palette. That being said, I really only use like five or six shades in here on a day-to-day -day basis, but I could see myself using this to make a really cool smoky eye look. Um, if you have blue eyes, these two, or actually these three will be your best friend. But for me, I'm gonna stick to these three right here. And maybe if I'm feeling spicy, a little bit of this brown one. This is gonna sound really dumb, but one thing I've learned lately is the smaller the brush you use, the more control you're going to have um, and the more focused your color and pigmentation will be. So for the more washes of color, I'll use a fluffy blending brush like the Charlotte Tilbury one, which is one of my number one favorites, or your uh, very trusty MAC 217. So an example, I'm taking the shade Boundaries, which is kind of a, a light camel brown color and I'm just going to work that into the socket area here and this gives you a very um, diffused look 
like it's it's defining yet diffused and the fluffy bristles help you to blend everything out so it doesn't look like you just like stamped color on your face i'm going to use this morphe m506 brush which is just like a very mini version of a 217 brush and i'm just gonna blend that under the eyes see how it's a lot more concentrated we still blended it out really nicely but still a lot more concentrated then i'm gonna take bucked which is a little bit more of like um, a, a neutral instead of orangey brown and i'm going to concentrate that out more into the outer corner of the eye and then finally i am feeling spicy so i'm going to use the shade endgame which is a very uh, dark brown Okay, so the mascara is a new combo to me, but I saw Kathleen Lights doing this and uh, I knew I had to try it. So it's the Marc Jacobs Prime Velvet Primer. I love Marc Jacobs packaging. Like this is, I could stare at this all day long. I don't know much about what Kathleen's eyelashes are like because, you know, there are some people who just, it doesn't matter what mascara they use, their eyelashes are gonna look bomb because they're super long, very dense. Um, mine are not any of those things. Um, so I would say I'm like a great candidate for testing out the actual efficacy uh, of mascara. So this is interesting because most eyelash primers um, are white. But this one is more of like a peachy shade. I wish that primers would maybe not be so light colored because I'm concerned about this sticking out underneath the black. Already though, this is looking quite curled. So the Pat McGrath mascara is, like all Pat McGrath products, intensely expensive. Like I bought the Mothership 5 palette that I'm staring at right now that I bought months ago and I have not yet touched because it's just, it was the price of my Nespresso machine. Everything that she does is beautiful. And I have a feeling this mascara is um, no different. Look at how curled my eyelashes look. I am on code like five right now and they get fuller with every stroke, but they don't really get any clumpier, which is actually amazing. The Velvet Primer from Marc Jacobs, this adds so much curl to your eyelashes. Like, my eyelashes don't stick up like this normally. This is insane. But the Pat McGrath adds a lot of length, but also separation. And then combined on top of that, you have everything that you want that adds to like super lash drama, if that makes sense. You have lift, you have separation, you have volume, you have lengthening. Um, let's do a little bit of a mist. I'm gonna take the same Smashbox primer water that I was using from before. We're gonna do a quick zhuzh all over, apply lips, and then we're done with this tutorial. What the heck? I'm not shy. So with the glazed donut look, um, I love to do a bright pop of glossy lip. See Me Shine from the Monochrome Collection, also from MAC. MAC makes really good lip products. See how that pop of pink just kind of brightens everything up because the rest of me is quite fair, the eyes are quite neutral, and the hair is gray. <laughs> so I feel like the pink just adds um, a little bit more color to the look. Yeah, so I, I love this look on me. I think that with the very fair skin and my hair, which is now gray, um, the lip uh, pop of lip looks really nice. I am normally a nude gal through and through with my lipstick, but I just find that lately uh, pops of color have been looking really good with the way that my hair is. And of course, you always have the signature glazed donut Marissa Glow. So that's it for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up because it helps other people find my video. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe. It's completely free and it helps out my channel even more. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.